A golf ball, down here, collides elastically with a very rigid wall and moves off in that direction. We're going to assume that there's no internal energy change of the wall. The wall doesn't move. It's very massive. Earlier, we talked about the one-dimensional case, where if an object hit the wall like this, a light object, it would bounce back, keeping the same magnitude of the velocity, just in the opposite direction. In this case, we're coming at an angle. And since we have an elastic collision, this is very similar to light rays bouncing off a mirror. This angle here, the angle of incidence, is going to equal the rebound angle, this red angle here. So given these constraints, what can we say about the momenta in the x and the y directions? The solid lines show the actual momentum of the ball. So here's p, here's p prime. And the dashed lines show the resolution into the x and y components. We're not considering the wall to be part of the system here. And we have an external force that's being applied to the ball in order to reverse its direction. Now, what is that force? Well, whenever you strike something, there's something called the normal force. We did that earlier in dynamics, which is always perpendicular to the surface that you're resting upon or striking. So we have a normal force that's changing the direction of the ball. Since we're assuming an elastic collision, the ball bounces off the wall with the same speed that it struck the wall with. There's no loss of kinetic energy. Of course, there is, but it's going to be so slight we're going to ignore it. So if the velocity is the same and the mass is the same, excuse me, not the velocity, the speed, the magnitude of the initial momentum and the final momentum has to be equal. So here's the final momentum. It equals the initial momentum, so we'll get rid of the uh, magnitude and vector signs and just say that p prime, there, the magnitude there, is equal to p. With the help of the sketch, so we get the right signs for all our components of the momentum, we're going to first look at px, the initial momentum in the x direction. Well, it's to the right. You can see how PY plus PX is this initial vector. So PX is going to be P cosine theta. PY will be P sine theta. And both are positive because they're moving in the positive directions. That's positive for X. That's positive for Y. Now let's look at the final momentum. PX prime this time is moving in the negative direction. So that will be minus P prime cosine theta or just minus p cosine theta, because earlier we said that p prime is equal to p. p prime y, the momentum in the y direction, will be p prime sine theta. Again, the final momentum is equal to the initial momentum, so we don't need the prime sign. So here's what we have. Here's our values for px and py, and for p prime x and p prime y. Now we're going to apply the impulse momentum theorem in two dimensions. The wall is exerting the external force in this case, and it's a normal force. So in the x direction, we get f sub x delta t is equal to the differences in the x momentum, and we get negative 2p cosine theta. Now look at the y direction. We have p sine theta minus p sine theta. We get zero. What is this telling us? These two equations tell us that the momentum is conserved in the y direction, but it is not conserved in the x direction. The only force we have here, once the ball hits the wall, is the normal force, which is perpendicular to the contact point here. So we have an external force in the x direction, so you would expect momentum not to be conserved, and it in fact is not. There is no external force in the y direction, so momentum is conserved. Mathematically, again, the initial and final momentum in the y direction are the same and subtract out. That's right here. The initial and final momentum in the x direction are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So they add up to a value in the negative x direction, and that tells you which direction the ball moves because of the wall. It's in the negative x direction.